Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise to our feet? We just want to begin this service in the name of the Father. And we want to make this song our prayer this morning and say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come and have your way in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome you, Jesus. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. You are our living hope. Your presence, Lord. If you know the words, you can lift your voice and say, I've tasted and seen, say, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, of the sweetest of love, when my heart, when my heart becomes free, oh, and my shame oh, is undone. It's only in your presence, Lord, your presence. One more time, say there's nothing, oh nothing, there's nothing worth more, there's nothing worth more, that could ever come close, that could ever come close, nothing can compare, nothing can compare, you are living hope, you are living hope, your presence Lord, your presence Lord. of love of the sweetest of love when my heart when my heart when my heart becomes free oh, and my shame is undone it's only in your presence lord your presence lord your presence, lord. oh so we say holy spirit you are
sing holy spirit you are welcome say come flood this place come flood this place jesus glory 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 in the same vein i want you to just praise the lord exalt the name of the lord for the name of the lord is a strong tower where the righteous run into and they are saved they are delivered they are set free exalt the name of the lord adore him exalt him magnify his name for he's king of kings he is lord of lords yes as we reach into our prayer point i want us to look at psalms 5 verses 1 through 3 and i read listen to my words O lord give heed to my sighing and my groaning hear the sound of my cry my king my god for to you do I pray. In the morning you hear my voice. Oh Lord, in the morning I prepare a prayer of sacrifice for you and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. I want us to pray right now that we may hearken to the voice and the call of God, that we may hearken to the, the grace of God, the mercies of God. As for today, it's gonna be communion. I want you to open up your mouth and pray. I don't wanna be the only person praying. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Pray and ask the Lord to hearken unto you. Hearken unto your voice. Hearken unto your call. Hearken unto you this morning. That his mandate upon your life shall be established. That the goal and the purpose and the vision that God has for you, it shall be established. It shall be established. Come on. I want to hear your voices. I want to hear your voices. Hearken unto the Lord. Oh, the Bible said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run into and they are saved they are delivered they are set free we are here not just for a season we are here because god called us into his marvelous light he has called us to his greatness he has called us into his purpose come on i want to hear you pray Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do it, kings and queens. Oh, we usher the presence. We usher the presence. We usher the presence of the mighty God. I want us to look at Psalms 5, verse 11. It says, but let all those who take refuge and their trust in your re rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout for joy because you make a covering over them and defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. I want you to lift up your voice. When the devil thought he would sweep you as wheat, oh God, prepare a standard against the enemy. I want you to lift up the voice to Jehovah Jireh. Lift up your voice to the King of Kings. Lift up the voice when you were dead, when you were in your sick bed. When you went through that turmoil, when you went through that disgrace, when you went through those problems, when you went through the situation, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and the end was there for you. He overshadowed you. He set a table in the presence of your enemies. I want you to lift up your voice. Come on, let us be in unison. I want you to lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Oh, we serve a king of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. We serve the God that is a lily in the valley. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Yes, Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you. Lord, we lift up today's service before you. We say that is the doing of your, it's a, the, the doing of you, oh God. Lord, we will not have fear. Every spirit of fear we bind and destroy in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we lift you right now. We pray, oh God, that you will take absolute control of the service that you will be the redeemer you will be the provider you will give the bread to the weak oh you make us strong oh our, hand, our, our mind shall be exalted in you it shall be lifted oh God we pray oh God that the sacrifices we bring unto you oh God in word and deed shall be established in Jesus mighty name I pray amen amen Oh, come on, put your hands together for Jesus. We're going to enter into a time of praise. Amen. Somebody say, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And most worthy of praise. And most worthy of praise. One more time, say, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And most worthy of praise. And most worthy of praise. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, none like you. Real quick, I just want to hear you sing it real quick. Say, our God is greater. Say, our God is greater. Yeah. That's it. Our God. Oh, awesome. the top. Hey.
see how I want you to personalize it. It's my God. Hey. Come on, come on, say. Say how great, how great. Father, there is no one like you and none compares to you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Come on, take this moment and really just worship God. Love on him. Exalt him. Father, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
and worship God from your heart to the heavens lift up your voice come on lift it up lift it up lift it up lift it up to Jesus Come on, lift up your voice and worship the one who humbled himself and 
carried the cross, who humbled himself in obedience and died a criminal's death just for you and I. Who are we? Therefore, God has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of this name, every knee will bow. That every tongue will confess that, yes, Lord Jesus. ultimate sacrifice sing for the blood for, for the blood of the lamb is my ransom ah yes lord i am free i am no longer power Give it up unto the Lord. Please take your seats. Take your seats. We want to welcome you all back to the house of the Lord. Come on, let me feel that you're in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Man, last week was lit. Man, you guys just did awesome. Give it up for yourselves once again for last week. Amen. Amen. Now, I got some great news for you. Yesterday we had great news. We had a funeral service yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I learned that from Elder Sam. And that funeral service is basically water baptism. That when a Christian is born again, you are baptized. And as you get into the water, right, you identify with the death of Christ. But at the same time that we had the funeral service. There was also a resurrection service that we were buried, but then we are raised to newness of life. Media team, can I have it roll, please? I want you to watch the service. Amen. That's the funeral service we had yesterday. I want to call up front Isabella Sarfo. Isabella. Harold Jackson. Presiding Elder, can you join me? Tarika Senior. Jennifer Tishikilse. Mercy Osevidi. Fatimada Kamara. Come on. That's a beautiful resurrection service. And Stephen. 
and uh, Brother Trinidad as well. If there's anybody else that did it yesterday that we may have missed, please come up. All right, that's everybody. All right. Yeah. All right. So yesterday, these folks have known the Lord, giving their lives to the Lord. Yesterday, they submitted themselves unto water baptism. In fact, they are the first water baptized people of Cup City. Come on, let's give it up for them. Oh, I wanted you to grab your communion. Yeah, can you go get your communion? All right, can we see more of it? Yeah, as they grab. And we want to give them the right hand of fellowship. Right hand of fellowship. Welcoming them into membership. Right, come on. Great. Wonderful. So in our church, when you go through baptism, after you've gone through all the classes, Cap Capital Academy and all that, and you are baptized, we give you the right hand of fellowship. And today you guys are blessed. There's somebody special in the house. I've not introduced him yet, but I want him to do that honest for us before I even introduce him, okay? I'm not mentioning his name, nothing. Okay, say so I should do that. So the Bible says in Galatians 2, 9, that James, Peter, and John, those esteemed as pillars gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. And so today, as the pastor of this great church, I love this church. I stand to you a right hand of fellowship, welcoming you to Cap City, the Church of Pentecost, Cap City. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now full members of this great church of ours. Come on, let's give it up unto the Lord. Shall we now rise as we take our communion? Communion is a time that believers come together as a family to celebrate and remember the supreme sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross of Calvary to save us from sin, death, and perpetual alienation from God. Thank you. The Bible says... That let everyone examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 1 Corinthians 11, 28. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. So I want you to spend one minute with your eyes closed. Get into yourself. Test yourself. Examine yourself. Am I still in the faith? I walk in the way that God wants me to walk as we remember what Jesus has done for us. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross of Calvary. And today we stand here, O oh God, remembering what he did for us. And as we take this bread and take this drink, may you sanctify them that as we eat and drink, our lives will be transformed into the image of Jesus. Heal us and strengthen us where we are weak. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's do it. So, officially you're doing it. God bless you guys. So that's the body of Christ. Shall we take the body? That is the blood of the new covenant. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can take your seats now. You're welcome to the church. Amen. Church, are you excited this morning? Yeah, yeah man. Cap City today is a new day. It's a different day for us. We are excited to have in our midst. The national head of the church, those of you who have completed um, Capital Academy, you know all about the structure of the church and the governance of the church. And we have our national head in our midst. The Lord has used him in so many ways. I've known him for a very long time. He's been a minister of the church almost 20 years now. Oh, come on, come on, 20 years now. And he's married to a very beautiful woman that I really, really admire. Mama Sheila Amwako, can we see? Yeah, come on, give it, give it up, give it up. And then we have what is called the clergy seven, right? They are all seven of them. 
can we see the clergy five? All right. Stephanie, Eunice, I always forget, Rachel, Michelle, and Kelly. No, we, we really want to see. So this is the first family of the Church of Pentecost USA Incorporated. Amen. And then we have Mrs. Margaret Kumi of our Spanish church in the house. We have my own beautiful wife, Mrs. Florence Ansa, the first lady of Cap City. And then we have our elders from Virginia. Can we see you, those visiting us from Virginia? Elder Akosa and wife right here. Uh, we have our regional deacon's wife. Yes, right there. Wonderful. And we are ready to fly. And today we are blessed to have the ministry of our national head, Apostle Michael Ajiman Amuako. You may take your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish we can stay here for the whole day. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for what he's doing in the church. Uh, this is so amazing. I can't believe it. Wow. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. On behalf of the leadership, we want to thank God for what he's doing in Cap City. Uh, this is my first time coming here. But I always follow you, whether you know it or not. Um, I have a very busy schedule, but I take time to follow Cap City. And finally, I am so honored to be in your midst. Actually, last week was the time that I scheduled to be here. Unfortunately, we lost one of our mothers, and we couldn't make it. Because we planned it in such a way that we could be part of your fundraising. And we heard about the great news that God through you have raised an awesome amount of 100K. Church, put your hands together for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think we need a bigger place. And that is why you're raising this money. But I can assure you that the COP USA National Office is ready to support your vision. Hallelujah. On behalf of the chairman, IMD, and the international leadership, and also the leadership of our nation, COP USA, we want to appreciate the leadership of our dear Pastor Johnny Ansa and the regional leadership. Also, the Cap City leadership, Elder Yao, Elder Sam, and all of you for the awesome job that you are doing. Uh, with this vision, Vision 2021, when it started, it was part of the church's vision to plant and model churches. And we are so proud that not only one, but now we have Cap City also as the second one. Rehoboth and also Cap City. I know we're going to do more. And I'm praying that this vision will be replicated in all the other regions. Oh, hallelujah. And we will raise men and women from among you to lead such an awesome agenda. Uh, in the vision 2021, any church that is planted, the national office gives them 5,000 as a token. But yours is so special. So I'm here to present on behalf of the nation to give Cap City 10,000 U.S. dollars. So, area head, Lieutenant Colonel, on behalf of the nation, this is for Cap City. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we were not here, but on behalf of the clergy seven. We want to give you $1,000. So my accountant will issue a check before I leave. Hallelujah. Do you know my accountant? My wife. Yeah, yeah. You're right. 
You're right. You're right. You got it right. Hallelujah. This year, the Lord has given us a theme that we need to equip the church in such a way that we'll be able to possess our nations. And that is exactly what the leadership here is doing. We know that for the past few years, especially last year, it was not easy. But by the grace of God, he has brought us to this level. As I mentioned earlier on, in the church's vision, we want to plant model churches. Say with me, model churches. And yours is perfect model. Your model is perfect. We have Rehoboth. Now we have Cap City. And I want you to become pregnant with these ideas. So that wherever your jobs or school may lead you, you'll be able to plant something similar. Oh, hallelujah. To the glory of God. So leadership, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We will take time to pray for all of you before we leave. But as I said, the theme for the year is equipping the church as an army to possess the nation. The agenda or the main thing that we're planning to do as a church is to train, is to prepare men and women to be able to possess their nations. And we want to read a few passages that is part of the main passage of the theme for the year. Now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, may and ratify an eternal covenant with his blood. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. I want us to understand that in this passage, the main passage for the year, we can consider God to be the primary equipper. You are here to be equipped. This center has become equipping center. So today, my theme or my message that I'm sharing with you is the church as an equipping center. We will take the church out and say, Cap City is equipping center. <laughs> say with me, Cap City is equipping center. It's an equipping center. Hallelujah. But when we come to this equipping center... Let us understand that God is the primary equipper. God has given you leaders, pastors, apostles, teachers, elders, and all that. But the primary equipper is the God himself, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And one thing we need to understand that in the area of ministry, he equips us with divine resources. Say divine resources. In Acts chapter 3 verse 6 tells us, Then Peter said, silver and gold we do not have. These young men had received the equipping uh, grace of our God. All the resources that were needed had been given to them after they received the Holy Spirit. I pray that God will release his spirit upon you. And grant you all the grace that you need. The resources that you need. One thing is that when someone becomes a Christian. And accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Pray and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They receive resources from God. These resources are not material things. But they are divine grace that God grants them. Could be healing. It could be uh, so many things that the Lord grant them. And with Peter and John, they received the grace to heal, to preach, and other things. And when they were going to the temple, uh, the temple one day, they met this guy who was in need. And God used them to meet the need of these people. May God grant you the ability 
to meet the need of your generation. That is our prayer for each and every one of you. As a matter of fact, it's not only uh, the resource, divine resources that God also grants to those who come to the equipping center. And even as you have come here, God, it is my prayer that God will equip you in the area of ministry. Each and every one of you have something to do in the kingdom of God. God has brought you here for a reason. Some of you may be at the age of 20, 24, 30, and other things. I came to this country at the age of 24. Little did I know that a day will come, this is what I was going to be doing. I also pursued my education in the area of IT. I thought that was my path. I remember when I, we moved from New Jersey to Dallas, Texas. I was ready to sign up for military. But this guy told me not to do that. Oh, hallelujah. He convinced me. I took the forms and everything, but he convinced me not to do that. He said to me that I think God has something else. Then I said, you know what? God has something, but as a military guy, uh, I can be a chaplain or something. But thank God when he convinced me, within about a year or two, the war in R R Iraq. <laughs> Bush Senior brought so many things in the nation that I, I never regretted. Thank you so very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. He's been a very good friend. What it is is that it is my prayer that each and every one of you identify your God-given gift. God has brought you into this nation, into this country, in this part of the nation for a reason. And it is up to us to pray and ask God. What do you have for me? Not all of us are going to be pastors. Not all of us are going to be lawyers. Not all of us are going to be engineers. But God has a specific thing for you. But being a lawyer, being a doctor, being a nurse, being whatever God wants you to be, it's another ministry. It's another ministry. You know, uh, the PPN that we have in the nation is part of uh, our vision. They have helped us a lot. Church, let's put our hands together for those in that area. You know, to be able to navigate through this COVID time, they put themselves together and start guiding the church. And it's a blessing. So in any area that the Lord has called you, prayerfully, prayerfully develop it. And that is what the leaders here are for. We are not here to only equip people or Prepare people in the area of ministry alone, but in their vocation. In that same passage, the Bible shares with us that God also gives us ability to produce. In that main passage that we read, Hebrews 13, that we read, he also gives us ability to produce. But we can find that also in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirm his covenant, which he is on to your ancestors as it is today. I pray that God through you will produce something. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I may not know the exact thing that God is going to produce through you, but it is my prayer that God will give you ideas. You become... Uh, you become pregnant with great ideas, great innovations in the name of Jesus. And it is my prayer that whatever God through you will produce will last. Will last. As a matter of fact, what we see here this morning is an idea that the Lord dropped into somebody's heart. Though, as the Bible says, the leadership, we dream that we need model churches. But God needed a container. God needed a, a womb that will conceive this idea, that will conceive these dreams that the Lord has given to the leadership. And someone needs to give birth to this. And we praise God for your life and what he is doing in Cap City. Hallelujah. Uh, not only God is producing or uh, equipping us in the area of ministry, but he also equips us to possess our nations. To possess our nations. You can read that because of time. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse number 6. I want to read the, only the first portion. 
when we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. And you can continue. That's the portion I want you to take note of. C-O-P-U-S-A have come to a point. We are almost about 30 plus years now in the nation that we've started. But God is telling us, my dear leaders, officers, pastors, brothers and sisters, that we've stayed here on this mountain for so long. It's about time that we go and possess our nations. It is good that we are able to possess Jerusalem, which is in our own area, among the Guineans, among the Nigerians, among the Africans, among the African Americans. But it is about time that we move from Mount Sinai to the place where God wants us to be. But to be able to achieve that, we need to depend on you. Tell your neighbor, we are depending on you. Oh, we are counting on you, neighbor, to be able to get to where God wants us to be. As a matter of fact, the vision of COP USA is biblical. It's biblical. 2021 was biblical. 2023, which is the international vision, possessing the nation, is biblical. And the one that we've just started, vision 2026, the next five years, is also biblical. It could be found in Joshua chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. Joshua chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. God said to Moses, to remind Joshua the eight. So in other words, God was telling the, 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 the older generation to tell the uh, incoming or upcoming generation that when you cross Jordan, what you need to do is to select or create equipment centers. Create a place that will be called a place of refuge. Select six cities that can be a equipment center. So in our vision, what we are doing, we are creating equipment centers. We are creating places of refuge where people can run to these places and be equipped, prepared for what the Lord has called them to do. So in Joshua, the book of Joshua, even as I mentioned 20, verse 7 to 9. That is where I want us to pay attention. First, we created model, um, Rehobot model. Second, now Cap City. Keep thinking and thinking because God is going to drop another one from among you. Oh, hallelujah. The first one that God told them to create, the model, um, Model church or equipment center was called Kadesh. Please say with me, Kadesh. Oh, Kadesh. Kadesh means holiness. God told them that first city when you select, what you need to do is to make sure that the people that come to this place, these centers, will be equipped in the area of holiness. As a matter of fact, without holiness, the Bible says that we cannot experience God. But I pray that you'll be able to experience God in all areas of your lives. In your educational life. Or in your educational life. In your emotional life. God wants us to experience him. We don't just come. As a matter of fact, when I came here, the, when the service was going on, you could feel the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. You could feel the presence of God. And that is what God wants for us. That when we come before him, uh, we put everything aside. And experience him. Experience him. I may come here depressed, but the moment I get here, there will be a new joy in my heart. Oh, hallelujah. But for us to be able to experience him, he is saying that we need to live a life of holiness. None of us is perfect. None of us is perfect. You read, uh, if you read from also 2 Timothy chapter 20, verse 21, the Bible says that, in every king's house, there are things that are honorable, others are not. I will not sit here, I stand here and tell you that I am clean, I am this, I am that. No. And that is why when we're coming to dine with the Lord, the Bible encourages us. Apostle Paul said that we need to examine ourselves. Because as human beings, probably you've said something, you've done something. That may be wrong, but God that we serve is faithful and just. 
that if we come to him alone and confess, he will forgive us. He will definitely forgive us. So here, Paul is telling Timothy that Timothy understand that in every equipping center, there are some, some things that are honorable, others that are not. But even those that are not honorable or dishonest, uh, if they can sanctify themselves, if they can clean up themselves, if they can purge themselves, then they, be, they will become a vessel that God can use. I want to assure you that you are a vessel that God wants to use. But what we need to do is to live a life of holiness. So I want to encourage the leadership, pastor, elders, officers, and squad groups. We mentioned, we spoke about squad yesterday, probably, uh, and a, a day before. So I know that you, when I talk about squad, I'm talking about the home cell group, ministry groups, home and um, Bible studies and prayer groups and other things. In these small groups, we need to make sure that we educate ourselves. We need to make sure that we prepare ourselves. We encourage ourselves to live a life of holiness. As a matter of fact, in the military um, uh, standing point, when someone gets into the military, I know some of you may be in there. They have something, exercise that they call rack exercise, that they put so many, uh, so big of a bag or something at the back, um, and holding guns and all that, walking about 12 miles within three hour period. Some of them get dropped on the road. They get tired. They get fainted. But what happened is that the soldier will never leave his fellow soldier on the road. We need to be our brother's keepers, our sister's keepers. You may see me drowning, going down, but it's up to you to encourage me. Don't accuse me. Don't critique me. You tell me that I can do it. I can do it. Let's encourage ourselves. We can do it. We can definitely do it. You have weaknesses, but you can do it. God didn't call us when uh, we were perfect, but he brought us in that in this equipping center, he will definitely clean us and use us for his own glory. Amen. The next city that was, or the, the model church that was selected, was not Calf City. But the next city that in the church, in the wilderness, they selected was called Shechem. Say with me, Shechem. Okay, Shechem mean, meaning a portion or shoulder. And that represents sacrifices. As a matter of fact, on that mountain or that area was where Jacob and Abraham gave the belt and altar and the sacrifice a lot. Abraham and Jacob in their generation and in their time, sacrificial offering was one that they couldn't do without. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm glad that Cap City, you build an, an altar. But not only altar in this church. In your home, you need to continue to build altars.